It's so good to be wherever you might be watching me. So good wherever you might be watching me in a nursing home or wherever you may be. It's good to be in your home. What's going on? What's going on? I've been praying for you since the last time I saw you. I'm concerned. I'm concerned about what's happening in your life. I'm concerned about your battles. I'm concerned about your burdens. I'm concerned about your sickness. I'm concerned that you cried last night. Yes, I am concerned. But I know a God who can move for you if you would just only turn your life over to him. And we thank you for watching us. And our information will pop up right there. You see my fingers bouncing on that address. It's like, man, that's something. You know the exact spot. And it just pop. Oh, look at that. Oh, here come that other word. Subscribe. Can you say it? Subscribe. 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 I said subscribe. Right? And our phone number and our location is all right there. And I love you. And I love you. And I know the Lord is going to move for you. At this great, at the end of this great service, I'm going to pray for you. And the name of our lesson today is: Do you seek God's direction? Do you seek God's direction? Now, this is an hour of information. You can get information from anywhere now. The psychic hotlines, the horoscope. You can dial the 1-900 numbers. You can look in the back of the newspaper. But that stuff's not of God. So many people, it, it's so much information out there, till if you ain't careful, you can end up on the wrong path, people telling you the wrong stuff to do. It, and most people don't mean you any good. Amen. People are jealous of you if you still have your virginity. Amen. Right? You're raising your kids right, you're happy, you're satisfied with the home that your parent or parents have provided for you. And everything else is deceit. The trick of the enemy is to take you out of that which is good to bring That's you in right. that that which is bad. That's right. But we gotta seek God's direction. And in the book of Genesis, if I'm not mistaken, there is a, it's, it's not a story because a story is something that's made up, but this has shown up happening. That devil tantalized Eve, he tantalized her, he tantalized her, and what did he use? He used the word of God on her. He made it seem as if God was hiding something from her. And isn't that the same tactic today regarding our young people? The enemy tells them. The enemy whispers in their ears. He plays up on, he plays up on his program. And the saints of God, we ain't playing up on our program. He got a bull horn. He got he outside all the time doing all different kind of stuff. And we ain't doing nothing. We won't canvas the neighborhood. We won't pray with the people. We won't do intercessory prayer. You in the services. You can't keep your man on uh, yourself. But you have come to serve. And so he may even feel like God in all his majesty, he's keeping something from you. But you need God's direction. God's not going to force his will upon you. You've got to seek it. you got to hunt for it. you got to for it. You got to long for righteousness. And then John the 6th chapter is so magnificent. It's so wonderful there. In John the 6th chapter, the people was following Jesus. And Jesus stopped them because he wanted to ask them, why are you following me? Turn to your neighbor if you're bad enough. <laughs> and ask them, why did you follow me here today? I can't hear you. Why did you follow me in here today? Because you were looking for direction. Amen. So real quick, real quick, in John the sixth chapter, it, 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 it says that it, it seems as if people wanted God's direction, but when they found out what it really cost, they didn't want it. They didn't want it. Pastor David and I, we went out some time ago. We went to uh, this their family's home. I think they wanted us to pray over their home or pray for one of the children. They made us this massive meal. If I ate for five days, I wouldn't be able to eat it all. Right? And I have a small appetite. And I'm like, Lord, where am I going to put all this food in? Because people, when you come over, and for most times, they're so excited to have you over. That's right. And they want to make you a meal, and they want to—they want you just to fill the home. And black people think all black people eat a lot, but we don't. <laughs> I mean, 
mean, they had, I can't even pronounce some of the stuff they had that for They had big place house for the Lord is going to love me. And the thing about me is, if I see a lot of food, I get full before I even eat. It's like, oh, that's a lot of food. But I know some people ain't like that. I know that. It's like, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Amen. But that's the way I am. If I see a whole lot of food, I might make me a plate, but I got to wait till later. Yeah. Right? But they were so kind to us. They were so generous to us. And we went out there, and Pastor David and I, we had a wonderful time with them. But it was too much for me. So the whole point of me sharing this with you is they anticipated what I might like, what I might want. And it was from a sincere heart, but it, was, it, it, it wasn't for me. Everybody can't wear a wig, but I have acquired a taste. Right? The direction of the Lord. So now, like I said, I'll let for you to get to John 6. Did you find it? So here is Jesus here. It says in John 6 chapter, just for a few minutes, let's look at verse 22. We are talking about God's direction. It's so much information out there. People got everybody know what you should do. Everybody know what's best for you. Everybody want to be your uh, mentor. Everybody want to be the person that give you advice. You better be careful who you're taking advice from. And desperate people make many, many mistakes. You want a quick fix. And so many people, they don't know who they are, so they just gravitate to any image that comes along. That's it. That's it. Step out of the showers of people and become your own person. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. You know, you can always tell uh, they've been around other people, here they come talking that jargon to you. I'm like, talk right, what are you saying? My niece, before she went to heaven, she went, she started working in this place. You know, you know I love you. She started working in this place. She came back, and what was she saying, Pastor David? What was talking to you like? How she, give me a demonstration. Yeah. Oh, Pastor David, that's him. He said, he said, Kelly, what, what's wrong with you? You see how we can so easily get ourselves caught up into somebody else's uh, program somebody you just you you doing some spiritual photoshopping you just drop yourself in wow. Wow. you just drop yourself in into somebody else's photo and now you come here looking at us like we talking strange you know, you're strange you just you just became a stranger yeah. and that's why what we say sounds strange you ever notice how when you're living right and fasting and you love God you come to the service and then you be like what <laughs> <laughs> Washroom break. That's right. Up in here. 
You know you're in trouble when you start dreaming about it. <laughs> you start dreaming about relieving your bladder, you know, uh-uh, <laughs> you get up, you get up. You get up, but this one turns to reality. <laughs> and you get up. You dream like, <laughs> Like, y'all, let me get up from here. No. Right? So, so many forces, so many people, so many ideas, so many theories, yeah. so many plans, and so many people we have allowed into our circle. And you can tell the way people act that they've been influenced, yes. that they've been taken over. Yeah. Pastor David and now and other ministers, we can tell you all day long that man is not for you. But we start looking like unicorns. Maybe you start, you turn to a turtle, what do I turn to a giraffe? Y'all just go home to the whole gamut of the animals at the Lincoln Park Zoo. <laughs> because flesh rises up. Flesh has a loud voice. And what does false doctrine do? It caters to the flesh. And so now we're not called of God anymore. But we still said the same message. But the devil robs you because you're not able to discern what the difference is coming from. It's not coming from the pulpit. I'm preaching the same thing I've been preaching for 23 years. You've changed. But that's the deceit of Lucifer. He wanna make you he want to make you think that we've changed. Mm -hmm. You found John 6? That's right, y'all, I was waiting on The following day, when the people stood on the other side of the shore, they saw there was no other boat there. Wait a minute, I think I want to go back there. Right? Okay, that's it, that's 22. John 6 and 22. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there save the one where unto his disciples entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but his disciples were going away alone, how be it there came other boats from Tyrus now into the place where they did eat bread, after the Lord had given thanks. Now when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, notice that, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, can you say somebody's always watching? Somebody's, somebody's always, always watching. Can you say somebody's always watching? Somebody's, somebody's always watching. It says here in the scripture, it says, the disciples were alone, how be it, there came other folks from Tyrus now to the place where they did eat bread. After that, the Lord had given thanks. Now when the people in verse 24 therefore saw Jesus was not there, Neither his disciples, they also took a shipping and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. The Bible says seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Now it's a lot of people crying out to the Lord. It's a lot of people going to church. It's a lot of people calling on the name of Jesus, but they ain't calling on sincerity. They're not calling to have a born-again experience. They're calling on Jesus, but they're not calling to Jesus. They are calling on Jesus, but they're not calling to Jesus. Yes. The Bible said that these people who are here now, it said they heard, they serve me with their lips, but they're hard not into me. They're hard not into me. They, they, they're not that deep. They don't want me to direct them in that way. It's like some people who come to counsel. They come to counsel in a bit, but they don't want to hear nothing we got to say. They use us, but it's okay. They use Jesus. It's a lot of people that call on the name of the Lord, but they're not seeking him in truth. And so it's a lot of people here in this illustration I'm giving you today. They in the ship, they notice Jesus was gone. Now sometimes people just want to be with you because you're morally good. That's right. Good looking, you know, you dress nice, you know. When you're around certain people, it seems like people kind of gravitate toward you, so they want to act like they in with you. So why they with you? The people that run with you, why they with you? Why they hanging with you? What, what, what they getting from you? What you giving them? 
Don't play with me. You're giving them something and they taking something. That's right. It says it right here in the Bible. It says, when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when came it thou hither? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because of the greatness of God, not because of his power. You seeking me for what I can do for you. Amen. And that's the way most people are. The Bible says here in Psalm 37, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighting in his way. Many people today, they put trust, they put their trust in themselves or in the rights of others instead of seeking the Lord for his direction. They only turn to God when they get into trouble, and then they expect him to instantly fix what they have foolishly gotten themselves into. I know ain't nobody in the building like that right now, but let's just use that for an example. It's a lot of direction out there. It's a lot of information out there. It's a lot of information out here about COVID. It's a lot of information about what happened with the Tuskegee men, how people um, use them as guinea pigs regarding syphilis. Is that, is, that the, is that the word? The word on the internet, right? And we will let other people talk us out of victory. Yeah, some of y'all, you do it every day. You woke up happy, God on your mind, you just joyful. Then you get to work and take that direction. Man, I'm glad somebody here yeah, I can talk to about what's going on in my life. My whole weekend was answering. You try to shoot the box until you can. You got a little peel, they got a big needle in the circuit. <laughs> Hey, you call to a little aspirin. <laughs> okay, aspirin. They got a huge need to just for this So true, bro. Come on, bro. You happy as can be. God and woke you up and feel rejuvenated. Sometimes these monkeys in here be so strong, I can't even fall right to sleep. I just got to let them wear off. We get home, we start replaying the service. How great God was to you and how powerful was his word and how you let the word work for you in your life and you took away a miracle, you took away a healing and we rejoice! Yes. But on the same note, that devil steals from you every day. In the book of John, it says it's his plan, it's his purpose. He uses other people to give you direction. And some of us, excuse me, some of you, you're so weak, you don't even know who you are. That's fall, That's why you fall into the hands of a stranger, because you don't even have your own identity. You don't know who you are, and you, so, you want to be loved so bad, but you're looking for love in all the wrong places. Isn't that Eve? Oh, Eve, they, oh, Eve, God is leaving God. I mean, just God alone. But think how seduced he had to get her to accept his plan. He didn't start right out telling her everything he was going to do. Amen. No, he didn't. She just kept. And you know the thing about it, what the devil does, he don't come on your turf. You go ahead. I know y'all don't like that. I know what my <laughs> said something profound. <clears throat> the devil can't come on your turf. You got to invite him in. You go, you go to his playhouse. Just think today. Don't say nothing back to me. Some of you are in a position you said you'd never be in. You doing stuff today you thought was demoralizing. You saying stuff, hanging out with people, but now it's all right. That should let you know how far off from God you are. So they asked Jesus, where you been and where you going? And he simply asked them, what you want with me? That's what he asked, what do you want with me? What do you want with me? Do not seek me for direction. Because the Bible says they didn't even know Jesus was gone until he was gone. If they really wanted direction, they would have saw him getting in the boat. They would have saw the disciples moving on. But the scripture said they looked up and he was gone. So their eyes wasn't on him. 
Who's giving you direction? Who's telling you what to do? Who's telling you how to dress and what to say? Who's telling you the direction about how God is? You better find God out for yourself. Amen. Because it's going to be a time that's going to come in your life. You ain't going to even have time to pray. If you ain't got nothing inside of you, you're not going to make it. Direction comes from the Lord. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 and 9, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my God's ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. In order to receive God's thoughts and his guidance, you must put complete trust. Can you say that? Complete trust. Complete trust. In the Lord's divine direction for your life. You must also live a dedicated and consecrated life before him. And just like these people here in John the sixth chapter. Jesus was performing miracles. Who don't want to be in the midst of that? Houses on fire. You want to be the one that go in and come out with the person. Who just fool. On a job, you want to be the one that come up with the adventure. You want to be the one that lift the call of demand. You know it's right You want to be the one sitting and drawing that boy even though you can't swim. You know You want to be the one that hit the mega millions. I heard a lot of I heard that. I heard that. I called it. I called it. I called it. You want to be the one that's the next valedictorian, salutatorian. You want to be the one that everybody gravitates to because you're so cool. But Jesus said, what do you want with me? Everybody want to be with somebody good. Everybody want to be with somebody that's handsome or pure. Say, yeah. And you know what? You know, like if it's a famous person or, you know, just say people come here for miracles and healings and they got to stand around the corner. You want to be able to tell the people if you're still here. You want to be able to tell the people, that's my church. I could just walk right in. And I got all these people online. I'm going to let you in. Not. I, I just dip around the back. Knock on the door. Knock three times. Oh, she ain't hear me. <laughs> right? You think you're further with God than you are. That's right. That's right. You think you're closer to God than what you are. You think the Spirit is using you more than what you what He is. Because you take the wrong directions. So Jesus telling them very plainly. Verily, verily, I say unto thee in John 6 and 26, I say unto you, he said, you seek me, but for what purpose? Why are you following me? Why are you here today, neighbor? Why are you watching this broadcast today? Why did you get up and get yourself ready to come out here today? Because it's a tradition? Because it's something that you used to doing, or you are looking for some help, or you want to strength, or you want a direction, or you want a power to get out of the mess you're in. Or maybe you realize for the first time, maybe I'm lost. I need a savior. So Jesus pondered that question. He said, Why are you following me? He said, Not because you saw the miracles, because you did eat of the loaves. Underline that if your Bible is a workbook. You did eat of the loaves. And he said, guess what? Now you feel. You're doing it now. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endured unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto them, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Like it's just that simple. You can just wake up, start speaking in tongues. They might be doing that at your church. You could just, everybody a prophet. Women, they elders now. The women's are elders. The women's are bishops. Everybody is a school of the prophets where they teach you how to prophesy. Giving you the wrong direction. Giving you the wrong direction. And every man's eye, they think their way is right. But the end of that way is destruction. You always right. Ain't nobody else right but you. That sounds foolish. I could go ask somebody to live on the street and be like, mm -mm, don't listen. Get my pillow back. Come right here.
They said, now nah, what, what I'm going to do? Come on, who, who been swung through there? Amen. What's the name of the Sunday school? How to what? This is how you get scammed. Scam. Who been scammed before? All the rest of y'all got that trip or everybody been scammed. Maybe you still in a scam, you ain't realize you ain't got the revelation yet. But we gonna pray today. <laughs> you go to the store that you go to some of these stores, they say certain items on sale. Don't you know they can raise the price on the other items? So it really ain't on, it ain't really a sale. But you just so happy. <laughs> you looking for you want to use your you want to use your uh, coupons on your phone right it's what what can we do that we can do the works of God let's go to Acts 8 I'm almost done with you you have a good time with me today <laughs> God's direction it's a lot it, this is this is the hour of information I tell you you know, I saw a commercial once about psychic hotline. And if you ain't careful, you'll think that that is right up there with therapy. They put themselves on the same plateau as therapists. And the way they had it all worded on TV and how, oh, they, it, it, how they, the direction that they gave, you better be careful. You better be careful. You better be careful who you're looking for to give you direction. Because I'm, I'm here to tell you, baby, once they get what it is they want from you, they leave you, you the one got to live the rest of that story. Saul felt God right out the gate, but he had to, he was a king for 40 years, but he messed up early on and had to suffer with mental illness. Until he what? Killed himself. He had somebody cast him on the night. Well, I told you, kill him. Don't let them take me. Yes. Yo, wasn't that the direction he gave the man? Amen. Right? So he had to say, I just wanted to bring you here about direction. Now, we just read in the chapter we just left from about show, we want to do the same work you do. Acts 8, starting at verse 9, said, what's that first word? What's the first word in Acts 8? And Saul. <laughs> I love that word. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people. This is the spirit of people who teach that which is false. They tantalize you. They make the gospel seem like it's so loose. They make it seem like it's uh, doesn't have the power. It, it, it got the power to forgive your sin, but it's not enough power to keep you out of sin. That's witchcraft and sorcery. Right. Right. How in the world is going to save you? Going to shed all his blood? He can set you free, but can't keep you free. Right. Come on. Right. What did he say in the rest of that verse? Giving out that himself was some great one. This is the direction he was giving the people. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. Just come to me. Come to me with all your problems. Come to me. Who want to come to you with all their problems? Who, who? You know, just think about how ridiculous that is. Every time a wife ain't getting along with her husband, you want them to come over to your house? You fool. <laughs> <laughs> that sound crazy, don't it? You ain't gonna never get no rest, especially when I'm boxing matches dance. You know how some of y'all be fighting with the fist? Got the ring up around the whole house? What's that Rocky song? And then when they make up, you standing there looking like a fool. So it says that Simon here 
was giving direction to the people. He was some great one. Be careful when you're going through stuff in life, who you're talking to. Be careful when your feelings are hurt. Be careful when your heart has been broken. You come susceptible to the devil. Be careful if you, you're so sensitive. Be careful when you're in the school and you want people to think you something. The devil is in the mix. He's in the mix. Because if they ain't talking about holiness and righteous and being pure and doing things that's right, it is not from God. It is not from God. What's so glorious about losing your virginity? Spoiling yourself. What's so glorious about uh, handling a gun or uh, misusing somebody? Don't you know whatever you put out coming back to you in this life? Whatever you put out is coming back to you in this life. You got to be careful how you live your life. What you say and what you do. I still remember, God knows I remember, even when I was a kid, some things that my parents said or maybe their friends said in front of me. Kids listen and they looking and they watching and you giving them direction without pointing your finger to them. They watching you. You showing them how to treat their husband. You showing them how to how to treat their wives. You showing them how to disrespect their mama. You get you are giving them direction. It is it's sort of like a contract. Now there are a lot of contracts. It's a contract where they can hit print on the on the computer and out come fifty or sixty pages. But then you can have an oral contract. There's a contract between me and you. And kids watching, you know what they throw back in your face? You did it. You said it. Yes. Tell me you don't curse, but you are the chief of the uh, of the cussing sentence. You kept it one on one with that. <laughs> you dropping on big bombs. You ain't said hell. No. <laughs> You said in the nail, they have been there how many times this week? How many times you didn't send somebody to hell this week? Real quiet, never you know I depend on you. You start getting in real tight like that, they start getting real come on camera on straight down. Like honey, I shrunk the kids, they want to test them. But as soon as they get down where they're going, that truth is going to be right there. Bam! Right, going down right, here. Right, right. So it says here, as I wrap up today, that this man bewitched the people for so long. And, and you know you could be under somebody's thumb for so long, you don't even know who you are no more. All your values, all your principles, just going down the drain. Direction for your life, you need it from God. You need power to live this life. You need the word to keep you strong. You need the word to unravel your mind. Because living life is hard and you need something that you can rely on that has stood the test of time. And I don't know nothing or nobody but the world. Yes. yes. You need somebody that to, to depend on that ain't gonna tell your business. You need somebody that you can be real with. You need somebody who can strip you down intellectually and let you know you ain't as smart as you think you are and you won't run off. You need somebody you can have a conversation with and you ain't full of man games. Like they do some of us when they come in therapy. They already know what they're going to say before they get in there. And they ain't going to tell me about that. And that ain't none of my business. Now I'm going to tell you what I want you to know. Come on. And don't ask me nothing else. They don't say it, but you can tell. You push that button and be like, you know. <laughs> what you coming for? <laughs> Therapy is voluntary. Except for if you're a worker. If you're a worker, it's mandatory. Everyone you got to have 
therapy because I want to check you out to see if you need to be checked in. I want to know. Amen, bro. Amen. You hear me? Amen. People working around you all the time. You need to stop sometimes and just talk. See where people at. They were talking about rolling a knife and a sword. <laughs> Monte Cristo. Amen. 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 People minds are bad. Yes. Studies have shown something happened to some people's mind during the shutdown. That people, we are not used to as human beings being locked up and away from people. They've talked about the suicide rate and the depression rate among our young people because they ain't been made, they haven't had a chance to socialize with one another. And they've been locked up. This is, you can, it, it, it's a fact. And it's a fact when you don't have God, your mind is going bad. That devil going to rob you, give you the wrong direction, and by the time you figure it out, it's too late. It's too late. This is such a dangerous hour. This is such a dangerous, it's such a slick, smooth, slimy, deceitful, manipulative hour. The enemy has set it all up like you're doing something great. And by the time it finally come to you, it's too late. And some of you, you on that road today, I must tell you. You feel as if you're getting stronger now. You feel your health coming on. You feel as if. Man, I'm just learning so much, but it's the devil's knowledge. It has increased in you. People, you gotta yield to God today. You gotta let him help you. You gotta cry out. You gotta realize that you're nothing without God. I know within my own heart, there is no way I can live without God. I settled this a long time ago. There is no way. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. I tried it, but I cannot live without God. I'm just a human being. How, how could I know which direction to go? I'm just a human being. How could I know how to forgive such a horrible hurt? I'm just a human being. How, how can I get over such Oh my God, heartache as a son being shot down. You need power to get over that. You need power to live in this world where there's so much prejudice and discrimination. You need power to live in a world where wrong is right and right has become wrong. You need power to keep the wires uncrossed in your mind. You need power if you're a man today to realize that your equal is a woman, not another man. Yes, yes. I'm telling you how strong seduction is. It'll make you think that all this time you've been in the church was a waste, but every day you've been in here is a day you've still been alive. Yes. You want to have problems? <laughs> but you're still here. But the way of a transgressor is hard. He applying a little pressure to you because you don't belong to him. And if you see, the devil just keeps giving you direction that when you didn't belong to God, your life was easy. No, that was because he was prostituting you then. But when you come out of something, you got to fight. When you come out of something, you got to fight. But if you ain't got nothing to fight with, you ain't going to stand the wows of the devil. The power of the devil. The devil is strong. The devil is organized. The devil is powerful. He will rise up in people. It'll be people you love. It'll be people that blow their when you're married. When you're married, that blow their breath in your face at night, but it can be like devil. Yes. Amen. That 
up on the Lord. Isn't that what God asked him when they got up there with Job? He said, where you been? What you doing up in here? He said, I've been going to and fro. And he said, I've been over there on Euclid. I've been on Jeffrey and Cornell. I'm on my way to prison when church is over. Hey! That's right. Come on. That's right, baby. I live on Jeffrey. How do you know? Do you hear the sirens? Yes, yes, yes. Do you hear ambulance? Do you see the hearse wheel rolling? That's me. Chicago got a sick mom. That's it. You got to get the right direction. All of us need training. Yes. All of us need a leader. Yes. All of us yes. need somebody to show us which way we need to go. Yes. 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 All of us need to know, learn how to raise our kids. All of us need to learn how to be a value in this society. Some of us go to work and all day long without them really telling us we ain't good enough. That's what they say. They don't say it, but they say it. Yes. Yeah. Talk down to you, treat you bad. But yet, some of us do that to our own mates. Some of us do that to our own children. Yeah, right, right. You gotta get some good direction. Yeah. You need to get your spiritual. What's that gadget that you have up at the iPads? Some of y'all need a spiritual eye pass. Y'all taking the wrong roads. Hey. But when you got a spiritual eye pass, all you do is do a drive by. Yes, Reverend. And it beeps. <laughs> but you got to replenish it. Amen. Yes. Ain't nothing like being in a tollway line and somebody ain't got no change. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me, Sebastian? You're like, what the world? <laughs> Can y'all see Sebastian? What the world? In, a, in his accent? What the world? <laughs> but if you got the iPads, it is drafted. What I like about the iPads, I don't use it that much, but you can put it on auto pay. Yep. Yeah. That's what we all need to be on today spiritual auto pay. Lord, you know I'm coming before you because I need you. You can count on me every day to pray to you. You can count on me every day to talk to you. You can count on me every week to thank me for you. When a problem come up, you can count on me. Just keeping my car replenished. Right, right. So when something happened, I got my spiritual eye pass. I can pass right on that. Yes. So we want to be given good directions. We want to take good directions. Good direction doesn't always make us happy and it doesn't always feel good. But in the long run, remember the eye pass was so I could avoid so many stops and I can get to my destination faster. But good direction don't feel good. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but you get where you're going with no regrets. You ain't got to be with people who just using you. Or that song talking about love the one you with. No. Come on, come on. No, you marry for love. 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 Right? Amen. Don't let somebody uh, tell you what you should be doing with your life. That's right. You know, so many of our young people, it just it's just a lost cause. Right? Until they finally come around, then it's too late for the baby on their hip and they always try to what's that app where they want the the, the money? What's that app? Okay. Oh, there it is. Now you can't even leave home without to make sure you got cash out on your phone. Amen. Don't tell me you don't worry about your kids. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Don't even know nothing about being a mother. Don't 40, 50 years old, you still almost got to hold them by their hand so they can stay in the world a little longer. Yeah. You gotta give a good direction. Sometimes it wears you out. Sometimes it just seems like it's tedious, but I promise you, it's gonna pay off. The days are long. The days are long. Sometimes it seems like that, that morning is not going to come for you when you're suffering, when you're sick, when you're going through. But daylight is going to come. Yeah. You can't give up. It's no easy way. It, it's no easy way. That life doesn't present you with easy ways. Occasionally, the sun shines so you bow and you're grateful. But most of the time, you fighting. You pressing. You toiling. If it's an easy life you want, then it's not salvation. That's right. 
But the devil, he'll rob you of your youth. He'll rob you of your body. He'll rob you of your mind. He'll rob you of your ability to think right. And then he'll just drop you like garbage. Holiday come up in the city, they don't even come on a regular garbage pickup day. That's what the devil does when he's done with you. He'll put you in the backyard in a bag and the raccoons and the squirrels will come in, come in and bite through the garbage and bite on you. Then somebody will drag you as if you were good, rotten wood, right to the right to the front. Then a garbage man will come and hit that button, throw you in. That's the end. They take you to a landfill. But if you trace your steps back, you took direction from the wrong person. And that's what gets. Every single one of us in here, we have to fix something that's wrong with us. 90% of it, we start listening to the wrong people. Amen. Young people, if I could tell you anything today, use your brains. Sex ain't the only thing going on in the world. You could be an engineer. I mean, some of these wrong people, they'd be like, baby, if I could tell you. But they dressed up today. And they didn't want to get in all that. But I tell you, <laughs> ain't nothing like what it seems. Amen. You tell me one person ain't here that bought a house, ain't got a mortgage. You tell me one person that got a new car, ain't got a new. Now you know what? <laughs> one plus one is what? I told you. <laughs> Marriage, you gotta work at it. Yes. Make yourself proud of yourself. Do things because that's what you're doing it to benefit yourself, not because somebody is trying to give you direction to do something that's wrong. And even those of you who are married, don't let your companion tell you to do something you know is wrong. That's right. Like, oh God, here she goes. I know, I know what's gonna happen before we had left here today. That she was gonna go down that path. And I'm trying to say what had happened because we've been married for all long and here she go telling me this. I'm trying to get then I tell you in the beginning, it ain't always be good. It don't always be good. <laughs> so Pastor David can't tell me not to pay taxes, right? Need, what? That's right, man. That's right. I can never tell Pastor Dave, why are you going to my bag? That's, right, that's, right. that's his bag, too. Because right. right. whatever's in his wallet is in my wallet, too. <laughs> Who's telling you? 